Now, uh, that uh, rate law, uh, actually that rate equation is uh, often proportional to the uh, some power of the reactants. It can be also a proportional to some uh, integral power or fractional power of the products also. And then we can uh, define the order of the reaction. However, if you cannot write it in terms of a simple equation like where uh, the uh, overall rate equation or the rate is proportional to the uh, product of concentration terms and each term is raised to some uh, integral or fractional power, then the order does not have any meaning. And today we'll see that uh, we uh, gave an example uh, that uh, how the reaction between, very simple reaction between hydrogen and bromine, uh, which uh, apparently seems to be a uh, bimolecular reaction, but actually it is a very uh, complicated uh, reaction. Uh, it's an overall composite reaction which is composed of many, many elementary reactions. And uh, then uh, we see a very complicated expression for the rate, where not only the reactants come into uh, the rate law, concentration of the reactants, but also the products come into the rate law. So today we'll uh, discuss uh, that mechanism as well as a few other uh, reactions, uh, mechanism of few other reactions, and we'll see how to devise a mechanism uh, successfully so that it satisfied the overall uh, rate law, which is experimentally observed. Now to begin with, uh, let us first define what is an elementary reaction. So by the name, uh, as the name suggests, you can ask this question of why all of a sudden a molecule is forming a product. It must be some energized molecule, and meaning that uh, we had a molecule, and that due to thermal uh, heating, which means heating means always collision with other molecules or some act by some other activation, say, for example, uh, by uh, shining light on it, it can actually go to some higher uh, excited state and then we call it as an energized molecule and that energized molecule can give rise to product and then uh, the rate for elementary reactions we can always write it uh, as as the reaction is written I mean in the st uh, stoichiometric uh, or the balanced equation so we can write it like k into a because this is a fundamental step and for a uh, bimolecular reaction, if it is something like more general type, A plus B, going into product, so the rate will be equal to K into A into B. Now, elementary reactions are always unimolecular or bimolecular because uh, the probability of having more than two molecules collide simultaneously and giving a product will be very, very low. Usually, in gas phase or liquid phase, the collisions which we observe are dominated by biomolecular collisions. So uh, this kind of reaction, uh, if we find that uh, we have three species and giving rise to some product, then uh, we cannot say that it is elementary and we cannot also write it as A into B into C. Uh, this, is, this is actually wrong uh, because it must be then a composite reaction which is, can be broken into elementary biomolecular as well as human molecular reactions. Now, so elementary reactions are always uh, classified as unimolecular and bimolecular reactions. Now, uh, we'll discuss both of these together, but first we'll start with the bimolecular reaction. So uh, we have two components, A and B, and uh, giving rise to some uh, product. And uh, for unimolecular reactions, we have a model, we have a kinetic model that also we'll discuss today. Now, the first thing is, uh, let us take an example, uh, and uh, like uh, the nitrogen dioxide example, we yesterday discussed the formation of nitrogen dioxide from nitric oxide and oxygen. And this actually from nitrogen dioxide with some rate uh, uh, constant and that rate constant I am writing at k suffix OBS. OBS means actually it is an observed rate constant. So k e OBS is observed or better to write it as a experimentally observed rate constant. Experimentally observed rate constant. Now the question is how the rate law 
for this reaction will look like the rate law we found that also was experimentally determined which we can write it as formation of uh, in terms of uh, nitrogen dioxide formation dno2 dt or we can also could we could also write it in terms of the concentration of nitric oxide or oxygen with a negative sign and each time we write it the coefficient or the stoichiometric coefficient will come in the denominator and the negative sign will come for the reactants while so positive sign will be uh, considered for the products now that we found that it follows a rate law like this and as you said that uh, three body collisions are rare so this is not an elementary reaction where two nitrogen uh, nitric oxide molecules and one oxygen molecule collided simultaneously at the same time to produce uh, the product which is nitrogen dioxide it must be broken into smaller uh, steps which are uh, which now we are going to discuss now the first mechanism we are going to uh, by the way the mechanisms can be of uh, one particular reaction can have very different mechanism and each mechanism uh, of course uh, by mechanism we mean that each mechanism or each model actually satisfactorily explains this observed rate law because this is what we are getting experimentally and we have to explain or we have to get at the end of the day an expression for uh, which actually matches the experimentally observed uh, uh, rate law. Now uh, let us consider a uh, model. So that first model says that in the first step nitric oxide gas and oxygen gas reacts in a bimolecular reaction and that is in forms nitri nitrogen dioxide. Now if you see the equation, the stoichiometric equation, NO3 doesn't come into picture. So NO3 must be a reaction intermediate which you do not observe. And in the second step, this nitrogen trioxide gas reacts further with nitric oxide to form two molecules of nitrogen dioxide. They're all gas phase species. So we uh, divided the entire, uh, uh, entire reaction, which is a composite reaction, which is expressed by this uh, uh, stoichiometric, I mean, uh, this reaction, which has a perfect chemical stoichiometry. But we are saying now this reaction can be broken into two elementary reactions. Each of them is bimolecular elementary reaction. And in the first case, uh, first reaction, we considered a very fast equilibrium between the reactants and the products. So it's a reversible reaction, the first one. And the second one is actually a slow reaction. Now, if you have many elementary reactions happening together, the overall rate will, of course, be dependent on the slowest uh, reaction. Now, you can have an analogy. For example, suppose you have, uh, you have many lanes uh, and where cars are going on, on road, and then uh, there is a bottleneck, and then uh, uh, you, you can easily judge that uh, the overall speed of the cars or the average speed will be actually dominated by the speed of the slowest moving cars because uh, they are creating the bottleneck in the in the road. So uh, the slow similar in the similar way, uh, the slow uh, if it is a slow reaction or the slowest step of uh, in a composite reaction, so that re uh, reaction will control the overall rate. So the overall rate will be uh, determined by the slowest uh, rate step or uh, the, that particular elementary reaction that, has the, uh, that occurs at the slowest uh, speed. So that step, we call it as rate determining step because it determines the overall rate. It's a determining step. Now, let us consider how we uh, uh, devise a mechanism. Also consider that we have some rate constant for this forward reaction of the first process and as well as a reverse reaction. And the second reaction rate constant I'm writing as K2. So considering the first equilibrium, we can always write that uh, there is some equilibrium constant. I'm just writing K equilibrium suffix one to denote that it is a first uh, reaction, first elementary step. And for that, we can write it as, this is nothing but NO3 
divided by NO divided by O2. So this is from the first reaction. Now the overall rate of the reaction, as we said, will be controlled by the rate determining step and you can see actually the NO2 is formed in this step. So the formation of NO2, if you just consider the second reaction, so the rate will be given by rate of the second reaction which is uh, dno2 dt which is actually the rate of the overall reaction so you can see the overall reaction rate is controlled by the slowest step is according to the second equation is k2 times no3 times no but we know that no3 can now be replaced by this and this equilibrium constant remember is uh, nothing but the ratio of the forward rate constant divided by reverse rate constant for step one. So you can right now, uh, right away actually replace uh, the NO3 concentration by uh, this uh, particular uh, expression which we just got. So it will be K2 instead of NO3 we are writing it as K1 by K minus 1 multiplied by NO into O2. So that is for uh, NO3 and it was then multiplied by NO. So you can easily uh, rearrange it. You can see that it will be nothing but K1 by K, uh, K1, K2 by K minus 1 into NO square into oxygen. So you can see the rate law now satisfactorily describes the observed rate law where we discovered that this K observed is nothing but a combination of rate constants of elementary step and this is the expression for K observed. So this is a mechanism which satisfactorily explained our observed rate law which is uh, actually some rate constant times the uh, nitric oxide concentration squared times the oxygen concentration and we found we can satisfactorily explain. However, we still uh, do not uh, know whether this mechanism is correct or not. You can actually come up with something and uh, some model and uh, which satisfactorily explains it. Uh, now uh, remember that here the assumption is that uh, the NO3 actually is formed as an intermediate nitrogen dioxide. So in order to uh, demonstrate that okay your model is correct or not, you have to show that this nitrogen dioxide NO3 is a species that was generated. Now you can actually do some experiments which are called uh, reactive intermediate trapping experiments because usually these intermediates will be very short lived, they are uh, formed and uh, then and there they react because they will be very reactive to form the product. Uh, so this intermediate, uh, sometimes you, you can actually go to very low temperature, uh, freeze the collision momentarily and then uh, or trap it in a matrix and then you can actually do some spectroscopy which actually will tell you whether this species NO3 is present in your mixture or not. If you can identify yes NO3 is present in this mixture then actually uh, it supports uh, this mechanism. Uh, I'll show that there is another mechanism that we can propose for this reaction that also satisfactorily describes uh, this reaction. Now point number two here is that we learned one interesting thing and uh, composite reaction can be broken into elementary steps and this is one way of breaking a composite reaction into elementary step where we considered a first uh, equilibrium in the first step and then there is a slow rate determining step. So overall this uh, kind of mechanism is known as a rate determining step uh, or RDS approximation. So uh, we just uh, what we did, just did is uh, proposing a mechanism based on this RDS uh, approximation or rate determining step approximation. We will now consider the uh, other approximation. So uh, this is nothing but uh, RDS approximation or the rate determining step approximation where we approximated the uh, or constructed a model based on the approximation that there is a slow step which is the rate determining for the overall reaction. Now similarly we can propose an another 
mechanism which is known as uh, steady state approximation now already we discussed uh, in the previous lecture what is the steady state uh, concentration of the intermediate if you remember that we considered a consecutive reaction of the type a is going to b and going to c with some red constant k1 and k2 and we showed that uh, under the condition k2 much much greater than k1 the concentration of b reaches uh, a steady state concentration which is basically remains constant over time after some period which is known as the induction period now uh, we'll consider a slightly different uh, version of this in the sense that we're uh, explaining the same reaction to NO gas plus oxygen giving rise to 2NO2 and then we'll consider the steps uh, in a slightly different manner we'll say that okay fine there is a nitrogen gas and first the two nitric oxide gas uh, react together to form N2O2. Now you see that there is a different species here. So that is step one. And then this N2O2 reacts with oxygen to form two molecules of nitrogen dioxide. Now stoichiometrically this is fine. If I just add one and two that is also giving rise to the same thing. But here I'm not considering an equilibrium step in the first case. And uh, what I, we are trying to say here is that we have a uh, rate and then we have uh, we have basically two uh, reactions. So let us first compare with this uh, equation. So if you, if you write it in this way, now you can see that uh, I have uh, a similar uh, uh, situation where I have to approximate uh, that uh, this concentration of this intermediate, which is N2O2, is uh, actually has reached uh, the steady state concentration after some time which means i'll approximate this change steady state means the concentration is almost uh, constant will be almost equal to zero so we have to just uh, find first a rate law for the intermediate uh, concentration and then put it zero and then we are done however in this model we'll slightly modify it a little bit so we'll say that actually there was an equilibrium because just we are keeping an analogy with the earlier case where we said that there is a fast equilibrium exist and there is a slow rate determining step. Here we are considering a slightly different thing. We are considering that, okay, yeah, there is an equilibrium and there is a uh, irreversible step, but we'll solve it in a different way. And we are solving it uh, under the assumption that the N2O2 concentration doesn't change over time. And we'll figure out if, if there is an equilibrium, what is the condition? Just like if there is an irreversible step, this was the condition. K2 is much, much greater than K1. In this case, we'll see what is the condition. There's a striking difference here. Here, you see that it is one species going into another species. But here, actually, there is a bimolecular reaction uh, going into some species. So we, there is a slight change between this uh, steady state approximation and this steady state approximation, which we are uh, right now uh, uh, discussing. This steady state approximation is actually for a bimolecular reaction. Now let us proceed. So what we'll uh, write is that dN2O2 dt that should be zero and let us try to figure out where actually the N2O2 is uh, being uh, formed and being uh, consumed. Now look at the first step. So it is being formed from two nitric oxide molecules so we can write it that it is k1 into no square but in the first step the reverse of the first step it is actually destroying so it is destroying at a rate of k minus 1 into n2o2 concentration just the reverse step and then again it is destroyed at a rate in the second step so destroying means we are writing negative sign because it is being consumed it will be k2 N2O2 into oxygen. Now we can just arrange terms. This or this is zero, so we can readily figure out what is the N2O2 concentration. The N2O2 concentration will be. You can see it here. So N2O2 appears here. N2O2 appears here. So it will be K1 
into NO concentration square divided by K minus 1 plus K2 into O2. So the rate of the reaction which is D NO2 DT with the half sign that you can see that the second step is uh, uh, the step where the uh, this uh, uh, NO2 is being formed so the rate of the reaction is the rate of the second step which is nothing but uh, K2 into N2O2 into oxygen and if we just replace uh, the N2O2 concentration by the expression what we just uh, uh, derived based on the steady state approximation is that so this is under uh, steady state that should be zero so then we get it is k2 k1 into no square divided by k minus 1 plus k2 into o2 now we'll see that we have not discovered the uh, observed rate law we have to make a further assumption now what is this assumption now think about it once I form this N2O2, it's a, it, uh, its concentration is an intermediate and we approximated that it is a, its concentration is steady state, that's why we made it zero. Now the question is, what are the conditions that made this steady state to be valid? Meaning if I form something, the intermediate, that should immediately disappear. Something like for the irreversible case, we said that as soon as B forms from A to B, so then immediately it uh, converts to C. That should be that steady state, uh, that will lead to the steady state condition, which means K2 has to be much, much larger than K1. Now in order to understand that, uh, let us think that, okay, fine, how N2O2 is, uh, can be disappeared. So N2O2 can be disappeared, uh, how N2O2 is formed basically. In the first, uh, think about it. So N2O2 is actually, disappearing like this like the reverse of uh, this reaction so the reverse of the first step we can write it k minus 1 into n to o2 and then there is another step which is taking it forward which is basically k2 into n to o2 into oxygen now this is basically rate of step minus 1 minus 1 means the reverse of the step 1 and this is rate of step 2 which is the step 2 which is just a forward reaction so the NTO2 is formed and then it can actually go back immediately to the reactant or actually it can immediately go to product now think about it if it immediately goes into the product then we have a problem because then the product formation will be extremely fast so then we have an inconsistency, but we, we know that the product formation is not extremely fast. So what we can do here is that we can make uh, that as soon as NTO2 is formed, it actually goes back to the original state. And so that way we can also make the NTO2 concentration as a steady state. Instead of saying that the NTO2 is formed that is, uh, and it is immediately forming the product, we are saying no, actually NTO2 is formed and it immediately goes back. Because if that uh, the other uh, condition is true, then the product formation rate will be extremely fast. So that is not the situation. So we are saying that this rate of the reverse reaction of the first uh, step is much higher uh, than the uh, second step. And of course, the rate of formation of N2O2, that is also, uh, that is also much uh, lower. I mean, there is a forward step, K1, it is forming and immediately it is going back. So that's what uh, we are saying. Now, if we uh, impose that condition, you can uh, divide both sides by N2O2. So you are saying that K minus one is much, much greater than K2 into O2. Now we can use this condition now into here, and then we figure out that uh, the D on 2O2 DT will be nothing but K2, K1 into NO square divided by k minus 1. Uh, we, we assume that k minus 1 is much greater than k2 into o2. So now we see that the observed rate law is the same like before. There will be oxygen also. Uh, we miss the oxygen here. 
Yeah, so we just replaced it uh, by N2O2 uh, concentration and uh, we wrote it like that. Yeah. So we just replaced the N2O2 by uh, the steady state concentration, which is here. And there was a K2 times there was a oxygen. So this is the, yeah, this is the K2 and this is the oxygen. So we see at the end of the day, this is the same red law, which we got from red determining step approximation. However, the striking difference, uh, there are two. The intermediates are different. So in one case, intermediate was NO3, nitrogen trioxide. And the, in the other case, it is basically N2O2. Now, there should be some chemical or physical logic behind choosing uh, red determining step for one uh, uh, reaction involving one particular intermediate and steady state approximation for the other reaction which contain another intermediate. Now, N2O2, nitrogen, uh, nitrous oxide, it is uh, basically dinitrogen dioxide or something like that. Uh, N2O2 is a very reactive species. So, the assumption here is that it, uh, we do not see actually N2O2 in that, uh, in that medium. So, uh, then uh, what we are saying that N2O2 as it is formed, it immediately decomposes into NO and two NOs basically. Okay, so that's why uh, the logic uh, is uh, something like that. Now, you can ask this question. Uh, if you take these two steps and apply uh, rate determining step approximation, or if you go back and take this mechanism and apply the steady state approximation, what do you get? You can actually work it out and see how you can uh, recover the similar uh, rate law. So uh, you work it out by yourself and see whether you are actually getting the same or similar rate law and also you are getting the observed rate constant as a combination of this uh, rate constant which is k2, k1 by k minus 1 which are actually a uh, rate constant for the elementary steps. Now, to summarize, we just choose only one particular reaction and we showed that how you can actually start from a, uh, you can very cleverly use uh, these two approximation. One is a rate determining step approximation where there is a first equilibrium followed by a uh, slow rate determining step. And the second one is uh, where actually you have an intermediate, but over time the intermediate concentration doesn't change that is known as the steady state approximation. And if you make either of these approximations, then you can actually uh, show that yes, uh, your, um, you can actually uh, get back your old uh, uh, equation, old, uh, uh, I mean, the observed rate law, which is experimentally observed. And then you can write the experimentally observed rate constant as a combination of all your old rate constant. Now, uh, uh, remember that we, we gave you this example of this, uh, red, uh, of this reaction and showed that uh, although the rate law shows that it is a very simple straightforward thing that two nitric oxide molecules and one oxygen and then it is giving NO square and O2, but we showed that actually uh, the inherent mechanism of this reaction is very, very different. It involves various uh, uh, various intermediates it can uh, it can and it uh, actually in, uh, in this particular case uh, to the best of my knowledge this reaction can proceed through either of this mechanism so both mechanism happen in parallel for this particular reaction uh, and both mechanism are correct and both mechanism actually satisfactorily explain the observed rate law so uh, in the uh, following section we'll uh, start with another uh, reaction uh, mechanism and where we'll use the steady state approximation uh, more extensively.